I'm back with this. I haven't done much for the last two or three weeks. Oh boy. I haven't done this since the mostly the beginning of June either, so this should be fun. Ahem. Lanaka begins reciting her poem. A clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her infliction is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion beyond each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is this simply a talent? Or natural? Fuck, I fucked that up. Good job, me, the narrator. Or is she simply a natural? I don't know. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on this bitch. Sarah looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I do not understand. Finally, Monica finishes the res res recitation. Recitation. Big word. Four of us applaud. Bitch takes a breath and smiles. Oh boy. That that was good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much, you stupid little cunt. I was just hoping to set a good example. That way you can learn better. Are you ready to go next? Ah, oh, fuck. I don't want to do these voices right now. Especially since people are home. But I don't got a choice. I'll go next. Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. She's about to rip the page from how much she's shaking and for fear. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium like so. This poem is called... She anxiously glanced at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice just shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. A poem is full of twists and turns in a structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. Even though with most of the words, they're big words that sometimes she can't say right. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling, whirling, I wish I could English, into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she will be bewildered even herself. I. It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding, like so. Because no one else wants to. Then everyone joins in afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri hurts the poem to her chest and rushes back to her sheet. S seat. Yeah, sheet. Fuck. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next, then. Larry hops out of her chair and gently walks over to the podium, like this. This one's called My Meadow that I shit in. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Hey, Ari. It's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? I fuck. Stop being a stupid cunt! Ah, <sighs> try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. And take this information, you stupid little cunt. I see. I see. Stuck up, bitch is right. Okay then. There he begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect smash. <laughs> Yes, this is soft. Soft and soothing to the ears, is it not? The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read the, this on paper, I'd probably, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. 
It's like to get to read. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. There it finishes, and we applaud. I did it. Good job, you stupid idiot. Eh, even dipshit liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What the fuck does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you very nicely. It might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite well as with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't quite understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's why well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Eh. Fuck my throat. Don't take that out of the context. Someone's going to. Then next, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Eh. Don't let me go before it's bitch. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let bitch lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. That's mean, you stupid little shit. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with so this one doesn't have a crybaby fit. It's not like I have much of a skill selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Purple bitch, green bitch, blue bitch, and pink bitch. All the bitches are looking at me. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway, because they pity me. Sorry I'm not good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Shut up. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki bejoyingly gets over to her seat and makes her way to the podium, like this. I don't know why I'm doing this, but it seems fun. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Eh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she started reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little and enthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The world feels like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. As quickly as this. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not let me do that again. Ah, uh, well. You at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people when it's just my friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise. I think it would be better the other way around. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. I said I want to thank everyone for coming, though, through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Ah, oh, jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all of this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. I don't care about your happiness. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Oh god. Okay. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. Another festival's come. I mean, up. But let's try to write poems with tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this! I can do this! Okay. 
I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same three of them as Sierra or Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake for the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go? The uh, fuck? Ready to go? Yep. Yeah, why'd you do my voice? No reason. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? No, it's not. I read that voice wrong. Fuck. I don't care. Jeez. Okay, it's okay, time to go. Time to leave. I'm such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's just go already. They walk home with some tiny shit once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siri has been a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, pink-haired shit. Eh? Oh, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to. I mean... I'm going to change your voice in a little while. Uh, excuse me. So let's just say that one day, Yuri has to walk home with you. Ah. Uh, what will you do? What kind of question is that? Do I gotta yeet you? I'll yeet you. you can't put me on the spot here. Eh. I would walk home with Yuri. It's fine. Why does that thought make my heart pound? Because you're a dumb shit. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... I'm not reading that. That doesn't have to do with it, what I just said. You admitted it. Jesus. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? The fuck are you talking about? I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. Though there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Is it poem time? It's poem time. I'm gonna save. Cash and damn it. Misery. Oh gosh. Extraordinary. What the fuck? Whirlwind. I'm just gonna. I need this one again. Okay. Romance. God damn it. Daydream. Motherfucker! I'm not going for Sari right now. I'm. St Disarray, okay. Papa! Fuck. Treasure. Memory. Raindrops. There we go. After image. Sensation. Okay, here we go, okay. Incongruent. Philosophy. Misfortune. Oh, Jesus. Contamination. Agonizing. Secretive. Forgive. Oh, Jesus. Heaven sent. It was the big words. Embrace, okay. Ambient. Tenacious. Uncanny? That works. Uh, incapable. There we go. I, I'm stuck with you still. <laughs> I almost want to say that. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked in too, you stupid... Yeah. Were you practicing the piano again? Yeah. Yeah. You must have a lot of determination. Now in this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super. Su I'm. Su <laughs> I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. I don't care. Eh? Will you complain about it just today? Well, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's all day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of food. You sound a bit like Sarah all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? Squid. That's a pretty stupid thing to look forward to. 
Oh, come on! Are you saying they don't like squid? You of all people! Eh, I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because... It's right in your name! Mon Nika. Eh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Wait, what? Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on their own event for now, okay? Is that a fourth wall? Might have been a fourth wall. Hey, my phone went off. I don't care. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sari's anyways. Excuse me, bitch? Where is Sari anyway? <laughs> oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. Put my hand in front of her face. Eh. She's spacing out again. Ah! Sorry! Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course! Why wouldn't it be? This feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things! You worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? She has a big smile and jumps up. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. Bye, if you say so. I worriedly glanced at Sari before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed and everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sari recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Spancor, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? I've been reading into it a little much, but she seems a bit downcast. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room with Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the only one asking you, Spencer. You certainly know her a lot more, lot, know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always she's always talking to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew if you knew anything anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. No way and sabotage her and make sure you don't have her. I mean I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try to talk to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it, bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, you dumb idiot. Hey, How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, probably shouldn't say too much, but Sari talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh... She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light that was turned on inside of her. What? No, that's not right. She's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it, than it's always has been. Whatever that is. You're so funny, you idiot. Have you thought that maybe you're always seeing her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Oh, fuck. Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, okay. Alright, goodbye. I know she said to forget about it, but I know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. She stands up from her desk and walks across the room where Sari is sitting. I watch her kneel down next door and gently talk to her. But she keeps her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. And then Sari told me not to worry about it. Told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care for her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's no, there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Yori is looking around me from her book like a fucking weirdo. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. 
I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone to s or start a conversation of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. I actually didn't do, even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you going to tell that what I was thinking like that? Fucking weirdo. Well, something that I do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. It's not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything. I don't. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who are willing to share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping it to themselves. But if you prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. That's really not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit easy about Sayori. Sayori? What's wrong with that bitch? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. I can't help her, but I wonder if she's if something happened to her. Oh! That's quite romantic! Eh? So, sorry! I didn't mean to say something stupid! No, it's not that. It's just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sarah and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Why the fuck does my middle finger just keep consciously clicking the right button? Ah, I see. And perhaps it's unusual for her to, to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little bit too much. Vancor, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep in pain's plain sight. I thought I said pain. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, they think that there might be something behind it after all. Hmm, I think Sari is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. They get everyone in here is like that. And she may not always know what she wants. I know it's a strange behavior today, too. I always feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Yeah. Sayori, you really mean she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. You don't mean need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Ugh. Your son looks deep into my eyes. In the look of, I'm going to fuck you and keep you in a closet. I should not have said that, but that's that. <laughs> I regret nothing. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. First, I avert my gaze. Sometimes a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware when you were in you. That, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feeling that way about her. Gary, you give me too much credit. I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, that, that's, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we ha do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. God damn it. I keep pressing the button. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off the whole thing anyway. Yeah, this is a good stopping point, I think. Maybe short, maybe long. I don't know how long I've been recording for. Anyway, I'll do it. Thank you for watching. We'll continue this next time, hopefully sometime this week or next week. Have a good day. Bye.